Hi guys, how are you doing? Let's see the Splunk interview question and answers part 2. In this part, in this part 2, we will see about the UF agents. Mainly we will focus universal forwarder agents on this second part. This will be a video playlist. So please subscribe and uh, so that you will get a notification for the new videos new videos okay on this part we will discuss about these questions i have collected around 12 questions i will try to answer as as many questions as possible if you have any new questions please comment them first question would be generally define splunk uh, def, define splunk uf universal forwarder agent Universal forwarder agent is a lightweight package. You have to install them on the user desk, user desktops or application servers or from wherever you need to collect logs from. That is what the universal sort UF package. Uh, we will we will move to this second next question you can see the here on a on a typical splunk installation we will have one or few or let's say 10 indexers approximately let's say 10 indexers we have on this for this 10 indexers we may have thousand thousands of forwarders so all the forwarders would be sending the logs to the indexers sometimes there can be an intermediate layer called heavy forwarder we will see that we will see the heavy forwarder in the upcoming videos so generally we we have to install the universal forwarder agents on the user desktops or application servers or from wherever we need to collect the logs from uh, you can see this uh, this intermediate uh, layer the heavy forwarder okay there can be another question uh, some manager some managers will ask that okay i want to i want to uh, monitor logs from a particular system but on that system i i am not allowed to install the universal forwarder agent what can i do these questions uh, many times the management managers will ask the answer for that question would be the workaround would be syslog for example this router switches some some systems we cannot install the universal forwarder agent from on those systems you have to configure udp or tcp protocols and send the event send the logs to some common location some other system on that system you should install syslog ng syslog ng is, is a software tool that will take care of receiving the logs and then on that system you have to install the universal forwarder and then uh, send the logs to heavy forwarder or indexers we may, we may discuss detail about these things in the upcoming videos but just for this part you want try to understand this one moving to the next question mm, deployment server sometimes many, the managers will ask do we need a deployment server or not they will ask so generally speaking if you are in if your splunk environment is very small let's say you have uh, 120 or 30 universal forwarders and for this small setup you don't need a deployment server at all but if you are having a very big environment let's say you have 100 200 500 universal forwarder agents then maintaining that administering that deployment server universal forwarders will become a very challenging task to do that to to do this management management of the universal for uf agents we we will need the deployment server from on the deployment server all the configuration files will be available 
we can edit them and we can push them to the universe uf agents so the uf agents will collect requirements collect which logs we need to do what what it should do those details it will collect from the deployment server and it will do the task and it will send the logs to the heavy forwarder or indexers i hope you guys understand this one and that and there can be some times they will ask what are all the requirements for example i have listed here so for processing generally we need 1.5 gigahertz uh, in this one ram 512 mb free disk space 5 gb this is um, sometimes some more than this hardware requirements software requirements will be like the operating system requirements will be asked in many, many interviews we will see about that in the upcoming slides one another important question would be what different kinds of data you can onboard to splunk so this question is an important one you can see that the files and directories network events network events can be two types uh, tcp events or udp events windows events windows events can be many events like the event logs registry data wma windows windows management infrastructure i believe something wma data active directory data performance monitoring data all this data can be collected on a windows host and then sent to splunk http event collector for example you want to uh, read you want to do something you want to collect uh, twitter events twitter's tweets and then send it to splunk and then do some processing on the tweets you can you should use the http event collector this is called as hack actually this is an important part hack http event collector we will see detailed about this in the in the coming videos scripted inputs meaning that you can create a small shell script perl, perl or python script and that script and the script will read the logs and then send it to index indexers and then metrics you can collect metrics on a universal forwarder we will see what is metrics and how to do that in the, in the new videos and then there there, are, there is a fibo queue first in first out queues fibo queues we will see about the fibo queues and all in the coming videos just for this video just try to remember these things and answer on the interviews sometimes some managers will ask about the light forwarder light forwarder is deprecated please try to remember that light forward is deprecated at the version of splunk 6 it was around 2014 or 15 the light forwarder was deprecated so currently we have only two kinds of forwarders universal forwarder and heavy forwarder universal uf and indexer compatibility sometimes the managers used to ask these questions you try to remember that if if the indexer version is 8x 9x you can have universal forwarder versions like 7x 8x and there are actually three kinds of data if e meaning events h h meaning http out m meaning metrics so you try to uh, remember this chart and then you can answer them on the interviews next question would be how to deploy a universal forwarder uf agent there are some simple steps i have listed that here so make sure that you have the pre-requests uh, check second question would be installing the forwarders I, I we have a de detailed discussion on this one uh, third uh, next part would be enabling after you after you install the universal forwarder agent on the indexer you have to enable the receiving receiving part to, to send logs to Splunk Cloud, you should contact you should contact the Splunk Cloud team and then do some tasks. Uh, 
this this is not required this is just for the information optionally configure splunk forwarder using config files and then you have to start or restart the universal forwarder the most important thing would be how to how to install the forwarder we will see here so this is for linux this is for linux the universal forwarder's home directory is opt slash opt slash splunk forwarder as for splunk indexer searches and all the home directory is opt splunk so how to deploy universal forwarder agent first step you would have to log in as a root second step okay this is a best practice question you should never try to run the splunk uf agent as a root user why because you have to create a non-admin user for example splunk user a very basic user and you should run the splunk as a as through the non non-admin users if you are running splunk uf agent through a root user it is a security problem actually i hope you guys can understand that one if you need more details about that uh, please let me know on the comments so the first step the step to deploy the uf is login as a root create a splunk user and splunk group user add command i have listed here and then third step would be export the splunk home export the splunk home fourth is the important thing the package you may use tar package rpm package dp dpkg package for different kinds of uh, linux so these are all the commands tar command rpm command i have listed here and then the fifth step would be ch1 change directory direct the directory permission you should you should give the directory permission to this Splunk user. Sixth step would be spl start the Splunk service. sudo Splunk home bin Splunk home meaning out Splunk forwarder bin Splunk and then start accept license. Okay, about the license, we have another question here. Uh, we will discuss about the license. Next part would be okay we have seen this okay what kinds of operating systems are supported some in some interviewers some managers used to ask these questions so please try to remember that windows 10 is supported windows 10 we have support anything below windows 10 is not supported anything older than windows 2010 windows 11 is supported windows 2012 16 19 20 22 all these things are supported you can see that all 64 bit systems are supported 32 bit systems only the last lowest part windows 2010 with the lowest 32 bit is supported moving to next slide on the when it comes to linux side all the linux kernel versions 5.4 are supported 3 3 and 4 are supported Uh, apart from Linux, AIX, AI, AIX is a Unix operating system. AIX is supported. ARM Linux is also supported. And then you can see here FreeBSD is supported. Mac operating systems are supported. Mac operating systems 10, 10x, 11x, 12, all this, all this uh, three are supported. And then power linux that is supported solaris please remember that solaris and aix they are these two are unix operating systems they are supported we may be having some old uh, unix systems old projects still using unix systems so this solaris and aix unix systems are supported and then uh, Z Linux that is also supported. Some managers will ask this question. This is a very important question. Do we need a license for Splunk Universal Forwarder? 
yes do we we need a license for the universal forwarder the splunk the package the universal forwarder package itself got the license it is enabled or applied automatically uh, you you try to we need not do anything manually we need we have to download the license and install them on the license manager for universal forwarder we need not do any 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 tasks manually this is a critical question actually many times uh, some some managers asked used to ask these questions hope you guys like this video uh, if you have any other different regarding the config files we will see the config files in a different video if you have any specific questions or anything please let me know in the comments please subscribe like and comment share with your friends thanks catch you later